in part two of 60 minute SEO, we're going to be talking about your website. So how to optimize your site, how to, uh, how to do two things more specifically. Number one, make sure that Google knows your site exists. This is especially important for newer sites, but we'll also talk about how to get some context uh, indexed faster if you have an existing blog. Uh, and then we're going to talk about page speed and mobile friendliness and that sort of stuff. These are like the easy st stuff. It's a little technical here and there, and I've provided some great free and cheap resources to help get you started here. But this is like what happens before you produce any content whatsoever. You, no keyword research. All this stuff should just be done before you go any further. So that's why I'm talking about it first and foremost. I'll come back to these resources right here. First of all, let's talk about Google knowing your site exists. What is indexing? When I say that Google indexes your site, what do I mean? Google needs to index, that's a verb, your site, i.e. add it to their big database. And you wanna find out if your site's indexed right now, I recommend going to Google and then typing in site colon and then your website, pinhappy.com. And it looks like there's about 23 results, if you can see that right there, for pinhappy.com. Google has this in their database, in their indexed. All these pages are indexed. Now, here are some strategies for getting your website indexed. Number one, just publish things and wait. <laughs> it's literally, even with a brand new site. Start publishing blog content, make an about page or your homepage or whatever. And over time, Google will figure that out. It'll find it, right? And first and foremost, you actually need to connect like Google Analytics or Google Search Console. I actually recommend you do both of those things. Maybe we'll talk about that in a second. Um, I use an SEO tool to do that. Yoast and or Rank Math are actually the two that I suggest right here. Um, but as long as you are connected to Google in some way, like Google Analytics or Google Search Console or whatever, their little robots will crawl your site. This basically just means like they're going to scan your website and index it in Google. Again, go to site colon yourdomain.com, whatever that might be, to make sure that everything is listed correctly. And you can also submit specific posts for indexing in Google Search Console. At the top of Google Search Console, you can actually see a search bar. I'm not gonna open it right now. It's really obvious though. And it's like search for a page in on your site and you just copy and paste in the URL and it'll show you it's indexed or it's not indexed. And if it's not, it'll give you a button that says request indexing, it's super easy. So I, again, I mentioned this a second ago, I recommend these two free tools first and foremost. These are WordPress plugins. This, this entire course is mostly geared towards WordPress people. Um, it's okay if you use Wix or Squarespace or whatnot, but you'll have to get some different tools. Here's a setup tutorial for Yoast. And I have another one right here for Rank Math. Both of these have setup wizards when you first install them and you register for a free account. Both of these are free that will help you get connected to Google Analytics and Search Console. It's super easy. For the most part, you just follow the step-by-step -step instructions. Again, go check out these two things. Uh, if you want to learn more about those, but those are the two free tools that I use. I use rank math these days. I used to use Yoast. It's fine too. Um, to make sure newer sites are connected to Google search console and Google analytics. That's what I recommend. And in doing that, you will be submitting a site map. You don't really even know, need to know what that is, but you'll be submitting a site map to Google and it'll crawl and index your site. Again, you don't even really need to know any more specifics beyond that. Just use one of these tools to get connected. All right, let's transition to talking about optimizing your website. More specifically, um, before we get into core vitals, I'll just say this, page speed, it matters. Your website needs to load fast in the browser. When I go to doingblog.com and I hit enter, it should load fast. That loaded pretty fast right there. And if it doesn't, people are gonna leave. And Google does not want to show slow websites in their search results. And this is easy stuff, really. You could go off the deep end, trying to optimize your site for page speed, by the way, and some people do. I don't recommend it. I recommend you do what I'm about to show you and then you just leave it because this will be good enough. This will be 90% of the way to a perfectly optimized uh, website. And if you wanna take it to 100% perfectly optimized later on down the road, that's on you. It requires a lot more money and time invested, but I'm gonna give you the simple and easy way to get you 90% of the way there. 
that's what I'm that's what I'm here to do. Page speed. How fast your website loads. It's incredibly important and it's easy. So before I show you how, one more thing. This is new, and I actually couldn't remember if it was in 2022 or 2021. I don't remember. Uh, when Google started talking about core vitals. Basically, there's a lot. You, you can dive into this deeper if you want to, but the point is it's measuring how fast your page loads and how, how well, not just how fast, but how well your website loads. Each individual blog post can have a different score. So you can actually see this through Page Speed Insights, Page Speed Insights. You just Google that, whip that up right here. And uh, we'll type in, how about pin happy? Copy that, paste it in there, and let's just analyze really quick. And there we go. It's passing on mobile, and it's passing on de desktop. Well, actually, I assume it is. <laughs> desktop is usually faster anyways. And this is taking a while, so I won't worry about it. But you can check your, uh, your core vitals here. 99%. That's really good. And here's how we did that. So there's there's really like three or four, probably four. I should have put four here. One of them's kind of optional, but three things you need to do. Number one, use a fast website theme. Simple, lots of white space. I highly recommend Generate Press. I've only recently switched to them again after like several years of using Elementor, um, but I love it. Generate Press is absolutely fantastic. There, you have to pay for it. Actually, no, you don't have to pay for it. They have a free version, but you can buy Pro. It's it's actually super cheap. It's like per year, like 40 or 50 bucks. Or you can just use the free version. Um, use a fast WordPress theme. And if you're on Squarespace or Wix, it's probably going to be pretty simple as well. But lightweight, fast, almost everything these days is mobile friendly. You shouldn't really have to worry about that. When you start making custom changes to your CSS, your code, for your website, you might screw that up in some way. But for the most part, mobile friendliness isn't an issue in 2023. Generate Press, I highly recommend them. Go check them out. I used to use Custom Elementor, and I still do here and there, um, but I'm getting away from that because it's it's been a little bit slow recently. That's number one, fast WordPress theme. Number two, image compression. Images are huge files. Your website is nothing but a bunch of files, HTML files, JavaScript files, CSS files image files, video files. Images take up so much space, um, it's important to compress them. Basically, it just means make the file size smaller so the site loads faster. I hate image compression, and so I use ShortPixel. ShortPixel does it automatically every time I upload an image to one of my websites. Um, by the way, you can use this for free. I actually paid for credits. It's super cheap. You just pay like 10 or like $20 for like one-time credits. It'll last you forever. It'll last you a really long time because you get some free credits every month too. Highly recommend ShortPixel. But there are also things like Compressor.io, and there's a million of these. Tiny PNG. There's a lot of different compression browser-based plugins. Absolutely free. So I could drag an image on here, Compressor.io, which I've also linked to right here, and it'll make the image a smaller file size and then I will upload it into my blog post. But again, I recommend uh, ShortPixel just because you don't have to think about it. You just upload images or GIFs to WordPress in your blog post or whatever, and ShortPixel just makes it smaller file size, load faster on autopilot. It's so fantastic. I can't recommend them enough. So fast WordPress theme, compressing images, and then using a caching plugin. Caching, you don't know what it means? I don't know what it means? I don't care. All I know is that there are a couple of easy tools to leverage a browser cache. The one I use is paid, and I'll promote it first and foremost, is WP Rocket. The reason I use this, it's also super cheap. It's like 40 or 50 bucks a year. None of these are really that expensive. This is like an all-in-one, I didn't even say it right there, all-in-one. All-in-one site speed plugin. And I could walk you through my exact um, setup. I actually, I'll just log in and show you the settings really quick. It's just fantastic. It just works. It makes things load so much faster. Another free one that I like to use every now and then is auto optimize. It's actually only one O in there. That's it right there. Auto optimize. It's a free WordPress plugin. That's even easier to set up. It's not quite as powerful as WP rocket, but it's honestly pretty good. It's actually pretty close. So if you don't want to spend the money on WP rocket, just do that. Auto optimize with just one O in there. It's really, really great. Here's my WP Rocket settings. Honestly, I just have file optimization and media are the only things I checked thing. I minim minify CSS, minify JavaScript, I hit save changes, and then I lazy load images. And that's pretty much it. 
Other than that, it might do a few things under the hood that I pay for. Um, it just works. Makes your website load that much faster. You do those three things right there, and you're like 85% of the way. And if you want to go to 90% of the way, use a CDN, Content Delivery Network. It basically just serves your website files that we talked about, those image files, those HTML files. It serves them to people in their browser, whoever lands on your website, from a server closer to their location. For example, I'm in Michigan, USA. If somebody accesses, accesses my website from Cambodia, a CDN will not show a US-based server version of my website. It'll show, hopefully, a Cambodian version of my website. Not the, the website won't actually look any different, but those files will come from a server in Cambodia or somewhere closer, and it does it automatically without you having to do anything. I recommend using Cloudflare because it's free for one website. It's pretty easy to set up. You do have to change some DNS settings, but it walks you through it 100%. Just come here, click on learn more or get started free. Uh, connect to your website. It'll take maybe like five, 10 minutes worth of work. It'll take like an hour to kind of like set things up for you. And then you don't have to think about it anymore. You're done. That's it. And you do those 10 things right there. You're 95% of the way to an optimized, fast loading, speedy website. And as long as you are connected to Google, Google Analytics and Google Search Console using a plugin is what I use, um, you're good. Your website is optimized. It's going to be loading fast. Google is going to really, really like that. You're going to pass all those core vital checks from PageSpeed Insights. And Google knows your site exists. And it will index content when the content becomes available. That's actually my last point that I should have mentioned up here. Um, when you publish a blog post, it does not get indexed right away. It might take an hour. It might take a day. It might take longer than that. You can always go into Google Search Console and do that, like, you enter in the URL and do, like, you know, fetch this, index this web page or whatever. I never even bother. I just hit publish. And then a day or so later, it'll be indexed and then starting to rank wherever it should be. Okay. We'll see you in the next lesson.